Hello. Hello, is this Sam? Yes, it is. This is Melissa Etheridge. Hey, Melissa, how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? I am doing great. Thank you so much for giving a call into the show. Um, man, I, I, you're a big, big, big person, and I understand you only have so little time, and just pretty much thanks for calling the show. Pleasure. I'm looking forward to talking with you. Um, some of the things I wanted to talk about, uh, mainly the This Is Me album. This is your first chance, you know what I mean, as an independent album. How's the tour going, for starters? Oh, it's been great, and that's one of the great things about being an independent artist now, is the album doesn't have to be over. It, it's been a year now since the album came out. I, I toured with the band. I have, I played this uh, summer, did some gigs with Blondie and Joan Jett, and played some big festivals this summer. Now I'm doing a solo tour, this is me solo, and playing the songs, playing the hits, and really just, really enjoying myself, and it's been a great year, and I've, I've, I'm, I'm so happy about everything. Well, Melissa, um, I've listened to this album. I listened to it a few more times in the last uh, few days to prepare for this interview. And one thing I love about this album, not to say I don't like your other stuff, one thing I do like about this album a little bit more is that you play with a lot of different styles, a lot of different music genres. I felt you were a little bit more open this time. Yes, I, I went into it with that in mind, where a, a few of my last few albums had been very, very specific in in a moment, in a type of genre that I was playing, and, and this album, I said, okay, I'm, I'm independent, I can go work with whoever I want, anywhere, and I said, I want to go so far, I want to stretch my musical taste, I mean, I have, I have 6,000 songs on my, I, I, in my iPod, and I, I listen to iPod, who has an iPod anymore, <laughs> my phone, and I, and I, um, you know, and I listen to everything from, uh, the, you know, old, you know, Bessie Smith to, uh, you know, J. Cole, mm-hmm. to, you know, Oh, you a J. Cole fan! I think he's awesome, I, you know, I don't, I know if that's okay with him, but I think he's awesome. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I think a, a lot of, you know, the artists like that are real poets, you know, and and I think they're the rock and roll of today. They're pushing the limits. They're talking about what it's like to be a youth, you know, in today's society, and, and, and that's rock and roll to me. So I really wanted to, you know, hook up with some, some artists that would bring more of that out in me. And and working with Jerry Wanda at the um, at the Platinum Sound in New York City, you know, he was the bass player for the Fugees, and he was just amazing. And, and and working with the with the the tools that that is is what you know the music is the modern music nowadays. So I uh, I really love working with him. I love working with Rockstar. Um, ain't that bad? You know, it, it, even though it, it came from a, a, a rap, a, a hip hop um, right. artist, it is so rock and roll because the the, the two the two genres are, are, they come from the same place. Oh yeah, it's just a, it's just a different instrument. And so I'm just having so much fun with it. I mean, one thing um, I, I got to ask, because of, you know, the, I guess, genre j- jumping, how have the hardcore Melissa Etheridge fans reacted to it? Or, or what is the reaction from the fans? They love it. My hardcore fans have gone through so much with me over the last you know, 20 <laughs> years. And, and I have, they love it because... As long as it's me, as long as I am in there singing, the words are mine, the guitar playing is mine, the voice, as long as that's there, they will go on any journey with me. And, you know, those songs, every single one of them I can play live. I can, you know, it, it might not have the big, I mean, does anyone have the big, huge feel without it being mm-hmm. recording? You know, I, 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 I make sure I play everything live. And the songs translate. They, they understand where I'm coming from. They love it. They love this album. Well, I can understand that because in your music, you always keep it 100. You are not afraid to put yourself out there. Has that helped or hurt you in the past? Just putting being that open? Well, it depends on you know, how you look at it. I have always looked at it as as a positive thing. As there, there's no other reason. From the very beginning, when I when I came out as you know gay and stuff, and uh-huh. that you know that I mean, I tell people, look, I used to, I was selling a, a million about a million records, and and I came out and I sold six million records. So it, it really, 
I can't say that hurt me. <laughs> you know, um, in the, I mean, overall, if someone said, oh, I'm not going to listen to her because she's gay, then that's, that's her, that's their problem. Right. And they really probably aren't listening to me. So I have, you know, stuck with this. Even when I had cancer, I was like, you know what? Boom, I'm going to be honest about this. I'm going to tell people my journey. I've just, because in the end, it's about me. Can I look back and go, hey, I'm, I'm proud of that work I did, you know, whether it yeah. was up or down or, or if it set me back, I don't know. But it's the overall story in the end, and I, I am proud of that. Well, you brought it up. I mean, it is October. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And, ma'am, uh-huh. you kicked cancer's ass. Yeah, I did. And- 11 years cancer-free this week. Oh, 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 okay, yeah. And, I mean, like, when you when you have that, obviously you just said it, your life has changed. It's a life-changing experience. Yeah. Your music obviously changed from, from my point of view because now I'm seeing more, you're taking more chances. There's uh-huh. very deep personal things with that. I mean, is that... Is that like, God, I don't want to sound gauche, but is that like <laughs> the upside to having cancer? Or? Yes, yes, yes. No, I uh, I am one of these people who will say cancer was a gift to me. I it, it taught me about my health. It taught me what's the most important thing. If I don't have my health, I have nothing. It taught me that I have a responsibility in my health that that I, I need to look at, at what I eat. I need to look at, at how I feel, what the, my stress level is uh, you know I need to keep active I need to do yoga that they taught me those things and that and doing those things so practicing those things every day has is given has made my life so rich and full and healthy and it also you know when you face your own mortality you're like everything else really pales in comparison yeah. so my my fear totally went down you know, because once you go, oh, I used to be afraid I have cancer. Oh, I, now I have cancer. Oh, oh, well, wait a minute. Now, wh- what do I need to be afraid of? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I need to do to get through this and get better. And then I'm not gonna be afraid of anything. I'm gonna go out and live life because you know it's it's there to be lived. Um, one thing I I, I have done some digging. And when you brought up with this in other interviews or other stuff, uh-huh. you said you have learned. What you learned during this is something nobody wants to know. Can you <laughs> help me out with that just a little bit? Because it sounds cool, but at the same time, I have absolutely no idea what you meant. What it means, it sounds cool, but nobody knows. Well, I, I have a deep belief that the next revolution that's coming is a health revolution. And that means that the current health paradigm that we're in, the current... Mm-hmm. Uh, medical okay we all we we work ourselves to death we go to a a store and buy our food in boxes and 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 work ourselves to death so we have health insurance so that when we get sick the doctors will take care of us until we die that that paradigm isn't really serving us anymore right and what what is coming is an understanding of what health is and how it is and, and how there's not a pill that's going to cure us. There's no cure for this or that. There's no outside cure. The cure it comes from inside. And that is, and that's a personal responsibility. And people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They, they get really upset when they think, wait a minute, you're saying that my cancer is my fault? <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 I'm not blaming anybody. Not there's necessarily, a, but I, yeah, I get you. I know, I know, and yet... There, we can't pretend anymore that that the sh- the amount of sugar that we're eating and the amount of processed foods that we're eating are doing anything but killing us. That's that's just the truth that a lot of people don't want to see. And and I, I feel there's I, little by little I see more and more things coming to this. There's more documentaries. There's more understanding. And you know it's it's a change. And that's that's where we're going. It, is is about health. Okay, um, I mean, during that, during cancer, you were a strong advocate towards medical marijuana, and yeah. you showed how it was a great treatment for you personally, as well as others in your recovery. Um, then it uh, that spiraled into a cannabis wine. <laughs> yeah, you know what I did? I, Hold on, I did have it. It's awesome, but I didn't know if that was the cannabis or if it was the wine. Either way, I'm fine with it. <laughs> What's that? 
I said, either way, I'm fine with it. It was awesome wine, but I don't know if it was just the weed in the wine or the wine the by wine itself. Never, when, well, why, does it matter? I did, no, it did not. It did not matter. <laughs> So, yeah, what happened is I, I really, uh, 10 years ago when I, I said, wait a minute, this, you know, medical marijuana, cannabis, I, I like to call it cannabis, cannabis is a, okay. um, is an incredible plant medicine, and it's an incredible recreational thing. I much rather would choose to, uh, in my evening, you know, <laughs> with cannabis than, than with alcohol. And, and I would much rather take care of my anxiety or, or you know, certain pressures that I have with, with cannabis rather than, than prescription drugs. Mm. You know, this, it, it is, it, it's not addictive. It's, you know, all the fear that's been put on it was, it was a, was a big campaign that was brought out in the, you know, the thirties and the forties and the, all the way to the seventies that really demonized it. Oh, yeah. And we're, we're, yeah, we're up against that right now. And, and, um, and one by one, states are, are going. Hey, no, no, no! This is better for us. You know, they've, they've, it's, it's being proven every day. And th- for the first time, Colorado made more on taxes on cannabis than they did on alcohol. So it's helping everybody. Yeah, yeah, it is. Now, uh, Melissa, I know you're busy. You got to get off here. I got two more questions. All right. And I know, I know, I know, man. I could talk to you all day. <laughs> And that's why I, I, this is my first one. Since I can't, I, you just so easy to talk to. You ever thought about coming back to radio? I used to listen to Melissa Etheridge Radio off my uh, iHeart Radio app. You, yep. you ever thought about coming back? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, it's funny. You've got a, you've got a great podcast. So I'm, I'm looking into podcasts and I'm also looking into maybe something on uh, serious sex. Him, but we'll see. I think in the next few months there might be something. Hey, if you need, I, I love talking. If you need any help starting a podcast, holla at your man. I got you. I got your back. All right. That's good to and know. And last and certainly not least, I know I don't want to eat up too much of your time, but lady, ma'am, you are more than just a rock star. You're a trailblazer, an entrepreneur. You, 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 you wear so many hats. I got to ask, what advice do you have for those who are looking to do pretty much what you do in any field I would say it starts with a belief in yourself you have to you have to have you have to have an understanding that that you're taking care of yourself and that you're that if you don't take care of yourself you can't take care of anybody else so you, you got to take care of yourself you got to not blame anything anybody it, it's always I mean it, it would always have been easy for me to say oh I didn't get that because I'm a woman or because I'm gay or something mm-hmm. Just, just throw that out. That's not the way it works. Right. The way it worked is to believe and put positive emotion and thought into what you want to do, whatever it is, and manifest that every day. Bring it out every day. Believe it. Say it. And and keep your energy moving towards that. It's all about your your energy will collect other energy. It will be infectious, and and that's that's what you want is to just get. Whatever your goal is, and and it's always more about the journey than it is about the goal. Okay. So it just start the journey today. Well, Melissa, thank you for giving me just a little bit of your time. Um, I'm so looking forward to your show. I know you're going to kill it. I don't even have to ask. I don't even have to ask. I know you're going to crush it. <laughs> and um, thank thanks for so much for calling in. My pleasure. I, I hope I talk to you again. Oh, I want to talk to you some more. <laughs> but okay. I understand your schedule. But anytime you want to talk, please let us All know. Right. Thank you much. All right, thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye.